For a long time, humanity has had a fascination with monkeys, especially chimpanzees, some of our closest relatives from an evolutionary standpoint. By observing these creatures, we get a glimpse into what humans were like before we were humans, before we wore clothes, before we learned to farm, before we invented the internet and tragically regressed back into slabbering mindless apes. But chimps have proven to us that some behaviours are more innate than all of those and come more naturally to us. Perhaps the most interesting of these, and most depressing, is war. Often thought to be the scourge of mankind, war was first observed in chimpanzees not too long ago when one faction of chimps drew blood on another in Tanzania, leading to a power struggle lasting years. Our story starts in the 1960s when not a lot was actually known about chimpanzee behaviour. Primatologist Jane Goodall achieved fame as the world's foremost expert on chimpanzees for her research on a community of chimps in Gombe National Park, Tanzania. She discovered that chimps were much more alike humans than previously thought. In her initial groundbreaking research, Goodall came to recognise behaviours and personalities in the chimps that meant she could tell them apart. She even started to give them names. She had set up bins of food for the monkeys, and observing their behaviour and visiting the food sources allowed her to discover the relationships the chimps had with each other. Not only would she note how much time certain chimps spent together during the visits, but also what chimps arrived together and in what direction they came from. The community of chimps was a few dozen strong and very close-knit. She also observed that they had tool-making capabilities, which until this point was thought to separate humans from every other animal. The chimps would sometimes dip stalks of grass or branches into termite mounds, and then remove the implement, which would now be covered in termites for them to eat. It's a little bit like fishing or coming up with a good title and thumbnail for a YouTube video. Yes, you are all my termites, and I am the big monkey. In doing this, the chimps would strip leaves and other protrusions from their makeshift fishing rod before using it, which demonstrated that they were able to modify their basic tools. This stuff is common knowledge now, but back then it was unprecedented. I mean the research when I say that as well, not the act of taking leaves off a branch. We've had that technology for a long time. Jane Goodall became very fond of the monkeys, who appeared to her as little peaceable humans, and, you know, also played a pretty vital part in her becoming one of the leading primatologists at the time. But they weren't as peaceable as they seemed. Apart from eating bugs, it was thought that chimpanzees were vegetarians, but Jane had seen the chimps organise hunting parties and prey on the smaller Colobus monkey. Wow, look at them. They look like little skunk monkeys. Little skunkies. Jane was fairly shocked to discover her lovely, friendly chimps had been hunting down and eating what are essentially Pokemon, but by the 1970s the chimpanzees would commit acts that would break her heart and give her nightmares that kept her up at night for years to come. It all began with Leaky, the alpha male of the group. He's like the boss chimp, he makes all the rules. Under Leaky's leadership, the group was strong, but Leaky died at the end of 1970. His successor as alpha male was Humphrey, but Humphrey was not as good a leader as Leaky. I don't really know what that means in monkey terms, maybe he didn't give as good of a pep talk. Humphrey's leadership was challenged by two brothers, Charlie and Hugh. Humphrey could take either brother alone, but together they were a force to be reckoned with. Over the next few years, Jane noticed the chimp community becoming splintered. At the food bins, they interacted less as a whole group and often came from different directions. By analysing the relationships the chimps had previous to Leaky's death compared to now, Goodall could tell that the chimps were dividing into two factions, those who supported Humphrey and those that supported Charlie and Hugh. It began slowly with the two groups interacting less and less. They wouldn't attend birthday parties of the chimps on the other side, and by the end of the year they weren't even sending Christmas cards. The two groups isolated from each other, splintering the community into two distinct tribes. In the south, the Kahama tribe consisted of seven adult males, three females, and their young. Led by Charlie and Hugh, the other males were Hody, Dee, Goliath, Sniff, and Willy Wally. <laughs> Willy Wally. To the north, the Kasakala tribe was led by Humphrey, and was made up of 12 females and their young, as well as eight adult males. Humphrey himself, Mike, Sherry, Everard, Rodolph, Jomeo, Fegan, and Satan. Jesus, Jane really named one of the monkeys Satan. So in one tribe we've got Willy Wally, and in another we have Satan. I wonder who the bad guys are. Jane noticed that after the two tribes had isolated from each other, they would stand off any time they met and display signs of aggression. 
before ultimately retreating. They began border patrols where a group of males would line up single file and scout an area of contested territory in complete silence, which is unusual for groups of chimps. They were looking for intruders on the border. There was even one chimp who campaigned to build a wall and make the other tribe pay for it. Sorry, too political. The first death of the war occurred in 1974 when a patrol of six Casacala males, Humphrey, Fegan, Jomeo, Sherry, Everett and Rodolph, descended upon the Kahaman, Hody, while he was eating alone. A chase ensued but Humphrey caught Hody and threw him to the ground. The chimps began to pound on Hody and bite him while Humphrey held him down. When he was dead, the Casacala chimps celebrated loudly. The Casacala chimps had developed a tactic for their battles. Even though chimps are social creatures and live in groups, they tend to temporarily split from a group so they can eat in peace. The Casacala tribe used this to their advantage and would assemble a group to come down on a lone Kahaman while he was eating. Over the course of the four year war, every Casacala kill was achieved thusly. D from the Kahama tribe was the next to fall. Goodall was struck with the image of Jomeo tearing a strip of flesh from his thigh. Next was leader Hugh. Later in the war, the older chimpanzee Goliath would be ambushed. Goliath was the only chimp who was on somewhat friendly terms with the Casacala tribe and offered little resistance as the unreciprocating Casacala chimps beat him. Goodall was struck by the sight of Fegan charging and attacking the quivering Goliath over and over, saying that Goliath had been Fegan's childhood hero. Now vastly outnumbered, the remaining Kahama tribe stood little chance against the Kasakala. The leader Charlie was soon felled, and Willy Wally suddenly disappeared, presumably to the same fate, and was never seen again. Not Willy Wally. For over a year, Sniff escaped the grasp of the Kasakala tribe and survived by himself. The possibility of Sniff forming an alliance with another tribe seemed likely, but sadly Sniff too was cut down by the Kasakalans in 1978. Jane Goodall's last memory of him was Satan cupping his hands under Sniff's chin to drink the blood welling from a great wound on his face, and the Kahama tribe was no more. You know, I was kind of hoping the last survivor Sniff would have been able to turn things around and avenge his tribe. He was young, he had a year to grow strong and survive on his own, possibility of bringing in some other chimps and turning the tables. He even has a cool name, like this is straight out of a movie, I was really rooting for him. But sadly in real life you rarely get the happy ending. Damn those monkeys. Fuck you Satan. The Kasakala tribe took over the Kahama territory, but they ran into another much bigger tribe the Kalandi. They were forced to concede much of their newly gained territory, but after some violent skirmishes, peace soon returned to the land. The war had a lasting effect on Jane Goodall, who had previously seen chimps as a nicer version of humans. Of course, her research on the war was very important. Many in the scientific community did not actually believe it. They accused Jane of applying human characteristics to the monkeys and over-dramatizing events, giving a report that was skewed by human perspective. Some said her feeding bins had bred conflict where previously there was none, but it has since been proven that Jane was correct. Chimpanzees do wage war in their natural state. Before this, it was thought that chimpanzees were as peaceful as Bonobos, another close human relative. But hey, maybe we just haven't been keeping as close an eye on the Bonobos. Who knows how many Satans dwell in the Bonobo ranks. Not that any of this information stops idiots from keeping chimps as pets, and promptly being brutally mauled and disfigured. And chimps are fucking strong too, and have a serious bite. Not only do they possess the physical prowess to tear you to pieces, but they're not mindless in their violence either. A dog will just grab onto a leg or whatever it can get hold of, but chimps go for the face. They'll bite your fingers off. They're known to castrate and disembowel their enemies. They pick their spots. Overall, it's pretty sad to know that war is so deeply ingrained in our nature. It came before civilization, before medicine and settlements, government and industry, language and diplomacy. The chimpanzees in Gombe had none of that, arguably. But if they showed us one thing, it's that war. War never changes. <laughs>